Welcome to the Feed Your Soul with Kim podcast. I'm Kim McLaughlin, your host. Today we're going to talk about life lessons from COVID. We've had 15 months of lockdown, of shutdown, and it's been a tough, a tough 15 months. And I want to have a conversation about what the life lessons are, what you are learning from COVID. I've got 10 ideas that I've come up with with my life lessons over these past 15 months. And let's see what your life lessons might be. Let's get started. Welcome to the Feed Your Soul with Kim podcast. I'm Kim McLaughlin, your host. I help people when they're feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, and overloaded, and it shows up in overeating. And the topic we're talking about today is life lessons that we all can take away from the pandemic. I want to go over my takeaways and see what might match with you. And then I want to invite you to come up with what your takeaways are. So since it's been 15 months, um, since the clo- kind of the technical closure around my my corner of the world, in my area, lots of things are opening. I can now try clothes on in the clothing store, which is a super big win. We can go to the movies and we can gather in places of worship. And you might feel ready to go out into the world, or you might not. And and I honor that this time of the pandemic has affected everybody differently. But I want us to start considering what are your takeaways from this, what I have found to be a very difficult last 15 months. And I think of it in terms of how do we make lemonade out of lemons, how to take that sour lemon and add some sugar and create some sweetness. And by sweetness, I mean gathering up the ideas and the learnings from this point in time. So I sat down and thought through what are my 10 big lessons that I have to take away. And I want to talk to you about them because they are informing what I do now, how I live my life and how I look at the world differently. The first life lesson that I found is that we are most social than we think. And there is still a necessity for downtime. So what came to me as I thought about that is the the idea of um, extrovert and introvert. And what I thought of is that the time of COVID was really an introvert's delight where you had this time to sit down, you had permission to be, to be quiet, to be by yourself and to not have to go out and about. And I talked to a lot of introverts that really liked it and liked that they didn't have to go out. Also, they found that they needed the connection. And me as an extrovert, I really missed going out to public places and to meeting with people in person. And what I found interesting is even though I missed that time with others, I actually found that through the pandemic, I cherished the downtime. I cherished the time where I didn't have to go anywhere, where I didn't have to drive anywhere. I didn't have to drive to work. I just walked down the hall and I was in my office, in my home office. I also really found it so Um, kind of wonderful that holidays were at home and that we didn't have to drive anywhere and we didn't have to do anything externally. It could be all around the house and, and kind of in my nuclear family here at the house. That to me felt really freeing. So I found that was a good takeaway for me that even though I'm an extrovert, I really appreciated my downtime and having time away from others. And I'm taking that into the the future. Another takeaway that I got was I really noticed the interconnectedness in the world. And it was profound to me to hear stories of loss and sadness and fear and to find it such a universal feeling that across the world, across our my city, country, the world that there were other people feeling the same way I was feeling at exactly the same time. And that was powerful to me to be, um, to be in kind of this global mutual understanding about how we feel. Cause it doesn't happen very often. I'm in the helping profession and usually 
more often than not, I am not experiencing the same feelings and the same issues at the same time my clients are going through them. And this was extraordinarily different because I was experiencing the same thing as them. And I found that I felt more connected to everybody because we kind of could look at each other and go, yeah, I know what's going on because we all understood what was up for each other. Another life lesson I took away that I know this, but it became more um, concrete is that we don't always know what curveballs life will throw us. When we came into 2020, I found my family and a lot of other friends that I talked to really felt that it was going to be an extraordinary year. When 2020, um, you know, when the clock struck midnight on 2020 and it's like, yay, we're in a whole new decade. This is going to be extraordinary. There's so much newness. And I thought it felt exuberant and there was joy. And my family, we had a lot of plans for the year. We had Actually, I dubbed it the year of the McLaughlins because we had so many things that we had scheduled to do and to experience that it really felt like such an opening of a year. And the curveball was actually my metaphor of that it didn't go, you know, it didn't go in the direction I thought. And as the year began to roll out, it was it was really clear that 2020 was not going to look like what I thought it was going to look like. And I think a lot of you felt the same way that it didn't end up feeling the same way we thought and that life does throw us curveballs and this was a biggie and that's how life goes. Another life lesson I had um, or that I have from the time of the pandemic is be grateful for what you have. I, um, I had my family. Everybody was safe. Everybody was okay. My uh, husband and daughter were here. My parents lived close by. We were all okay and nobody was sick or had any lasting problems. And I know that that didn't happen for everybody, but I really felt grateful that I had a house to live in, that we had enough food, that we had money, that we could take care of everything and that um, really being grateful that I had what I had rather than uh, spending as much time being caught up in the what I don't have. I can't do this. I can't do that. But it's really um, kind of planted in, in me that I want to be more grateful more often than not for what I have because I have a lot and I have a lot to be grateful for. And being in that attitude of gratitude helps me to feel better about myself and better about my life. Another interesting life lessons that was another takeaway for me was food is comforting. And I know we all know that. I talk about that a lot on the podcast. I talk about that in my in my programs. I talk about it with my clients. But food is comforting. And over these last 15 months, I think we've all experienced that food was was uh, comfort. And I don't mean necessarily that we overate because of it, but just like food, it felt like, wow, the one thing I had was we could make a nice meal or we could have something good. Um, we would do takeout from local um, restaurants to make sure that we were helping them keep their business open. And it was delicious. We got some really delicious food and it was comforting to have something so um, so delicious for us to have. Um, I also noticed that the comfort of food in terms of food scarcity, and I would feel scared when there were points in time when I would go to the store and there were there were empty shelves and it was a lot of the staple um, items, you know, like pastas and and um, and things like spaghetti sauce and those kind of things that were on the shelf, the ca more canned bottled foods the long lasting foods, especially when there was talk of a total shutdown in my area where you couldn't even go to the grocery store. And I think everybody along with me felt kind of scared about what might happen. And I felt that fear of not having enough food. And I, I recognized that and I had never experienced that in my life. And it really made me have empathy for people that do have actual food insecurity because they literally don't have enough food and and the takeaway for me is that 
we all deserve to have enough food and food is comforting and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having food be, feel comforting. Hi guys, this is Kim and I want to let you know that the Emotional Eating Solutions eight week course is open now. You can find it on my website at feedyoursoulunlimited.com. Go to the work with Kim tab and click on that. This is the time to get peace with food, and I know this course will help you. You also can find the link in the show notes to the Emotional Eating Solutions 8-Week Self-Study Course. Another life lesson that I got really um, in a large way was movement for me is critical. I... I've talked before about going to the gym. I go regularly and I often say, you know, I go because I know I need to. And often I would choose not to go if I had the choice, but it just, I know that for my body to work well, I have to go to the gym and I have to be active. What I found during the pandemic is my gym closed and I didn't move as much. I sat more, even though at the end of the day, my family, we, we had this ritual we would do every day where we took a walk, we took the dog out for a walk. And it was really nice to get out, to be out in the sunshine, to um, have the fresh air and to be physically active. But what I found is that that wasn't enough for me. I would work out, my gym would do online virtual workouts and I would do that, but I wouldn't do it as hard as I would normally do it when I'm at the gym. And so I was so excited when my gym, I'm going to put in quotes, opened up early in the summer because what happened was they would have, the coach would go to the a local park. And so we would all bring, um, you know, our mats and we would sit um, socially distanced from each other and we would work out together. And that was really a saving grace for me. It was so important to me to go to those gym workouts. And I began to get afraid when there would be more shutdowns in our area that my gym would stop doing that. I was really concerned about it because it was something that I found was critical to my body, especially since I've been sitting, I, I feel like I sat more during the pandemic because I wasn't driving anywhere, walking around the mall or getting out and about and walking. So I, I could feel the effects of sitting and I didn't like it. I didn't like how it felt. And so I became to understand for myself, movement is critical and I need to do it. And since my gym has been open fully. I have been going regularly. I really enjoy it. And I have a different view of it for myself and, and, ha and, and seeing that I need it. Another life lesson that I knew, but once again, I came to understand it in a more profound way was routines are important no matter what. When the pandemic first started, to me, it brought this lack of centeredness for myself, my family, and also for my clients. And we didn't have to keep a schedule. It, things were really chaotic. And I didn't have to do things in the same way at the same time, going to bed or when we had food or um, kind of when I work. I work. My work gave me some type of schedule. But also my daughter didn't have as much of a schedule because virtual school was really, really different. So life felt off. Um, and what I found as I really thought about it is that I had to have a routine and I had to make sure my routine was set and, and also set for my family um, where we did things on, a, you know, we had uh, meals at a regular time. We had sleep at a regular time. We had some kind of movement at a regular time. We had school and work at a regular time because it was very disorienting to not have that routine. So for me, that was a huge takeaway that routines are important no matter what. An eighth, um, my eighth lesson that I got from the pandemic is we can adapt to difficult situations and we are resilient. I was worried when we had the shutdown and my daughter's school just closed and they went, I'm going to put it in quotes, to virtual school, which didn't work really well in the beginning. They were kind of disorganized and didn't have it set up. 
granted, nobody knew how to do virtual school at that time. And so it be had to develop over time where school, the virtual school became um, better, better. I knew that when our daughter was out of school that there was no way my husband and I were, we were not equipped to be a teacher. We were not going to homeschool her. And we just waited for the school to figure out how they could do some quality virtual classes. We did, um, within that, set up routines for her, back to that last um, life lesson that I, that I said, is that when there was, you know, school time during the day, that would mean not being on a device. And so she would have some routine set up to make it approximate what it might be like at school as best we could given the situation. We also found that one of the things she set up a lot, our daughter set up a lot, is she had a lot of virtual play dates with her friends where she would call them, they would do Zoom meetings, they would talk, they would play games virtually, and they would also do DIY projects. They made a lot of fun art um, and crafts kind of things during that time. So she was, you know, I was worried that being out of school might be difficult for her. She's caught up. She's way on target with her school because her school is back in full time. So she didn't lose anything and that she, along with the rest of us, are very resilient and we will get through it. The ninth thing that I came away with, a, a lesson that I learned is that, or it was kind of just came back to me again, is that we don't know when our last day on earth will be and that we need to cherish the people and the moments when they're here. There were a lot of people that, that whose family members passed over the time during COVID from COVID. And that was really a hard situation because it would be every night on the news would be like how many people had lost their lives. And, you know, you'd extrapolate from that the amount of people who lost their lives and then how many people were affected by those people losing their lives. And it was, it was very sad and, and a heart, it was very heart filled time for me. What happened in our family is that we didn't have anybody who got really sick from COVID. We had a couple of people who came positive, but nobody was in the hospital and nobody died from COVID. But what happened in our family is that there were a very, some close family members who made their transition during the time of COVID. And it was it was sad to have that happen because we couldn't have the gatherings that we would normally have to, to get together to celebrate their lives. As, as a matter of fact, my uh, father-in-law made his transition last year during COVID, not from COVID, and it wasn't unexpected. But this weekend, we're going to have a celebration of life um, all the family's going to get together. And so it's been it's been over a year and we haven't had a celebration of life for him. And it feels real nice that we can get together and honor him in a way that fits for all of us and and cherish our time with him and cherish his memory. Lastly, and it's not the last life lesson, but it's the last one I thought of for for this podcast was the the idea that no matter what, kindness is key. Um, there were so many acts of kindness, random acts of kindness over these last 15 months. And I know all of you have, have had that happen with you that they really realizing kindness matters. The, the people on the front lines, the doctors and the nurses, um, all the first responders that they were willing to go out during this time where all of us were asked to stay home and, and put themselves out to help other people. Also, the psychotherapists. Um, psychotherapists were going through the same problem or same difficulties as all of our clients, and and the psychotherapists really showed up and and really um, helped people. Uh, for me, and I know most of the other therapists I've talked to. We had a waiting list that there were just too many people wanting to come in for therapy because life was really tough. And never in my career have I had to turn people away because I just didn't have any more room to help them out. So that was um, difficult. And I just know that it. I, I felt um, heartened by the, the people that would come in for therapy and that they really wanted to feel better and, and really acknowledge that the 
the time of COVID was difficult and they wanted something different. I also think about kindness in terms of the, um, what really became clear to me is how important the people that work in the grocery store are. Once again, I came back to that food insecurity I talked about earlier and that food is comfort and that they would work in the grocery store and keep this, the shelves stocked as best they could. But that was really important to me. And I felt grateful that they were there, that they were willing to help all of us out. Also, all the stories of neighbors and strangers and people who didn't know each other who would help each other out. And for me, it helped with the shared experience of bonding with each other and that feeling of kindness towards each other. So, you know, those are quickly through 10 life lessons that I could come up with. And actually, after I wrote them all down, I, I came up with more and maybe I'll do another podcast on this. And I, I just want you to consider as you're doable what are your wins from this last 15 months? What's your takeaway? What are you going to embrace? What lessons have you have become clearer to you, either new lessons or kind of reintegrating those old lessons? And what is that? And how can you incorporate that into your life? And how can you um, allow this last 15 months not to go um wasted so to speak where you're not using it as a way to move forward for me i think the lessons are going to keep come will keep coming about this and i will have more ideas about how i've been impacted but but let's look at the life lessons the good things that you've gotten and and how we can um strive not to forget those lessons and integrate them into our lives So I would encourage you to do that. I would also encourage you, um, I'm on Instagram and I've just posted on my Feed Your Soul Unlimited Instagram handle about what are your life lessons? What are your takeaways from the pandemic? I would love to know what they are. I would love to get more ideas because I know that there's more than the 10 that I've brought up, but let me know what you think. What are your life lessons out of this, out of this really difficult time? And I am so glad that you listened to our podcast. Please be sure to like and share this podcast with others so that we get a stronger reach and more people feel um, supported through any challenges they might be experiencing. Have a great day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Thank you for joining us on the Feed Your Soul with Kim podcast. We come to you every Monday with fresh new ideas to help you end emotional eating and put food in its proper place as nourishment. Please be sure to subscribe to this podcast and review it and let us know what you think. Thank you for joining us.